This video shows you how you can use XBRL Sheet to leverage the transparency that's built into XBRL. Now we've already put the hooks into our data to enable you to dance around it. But we've never made the most of those connections when the data actually gets to Excel. Now we have built a couple of functions which do just that. So looking at our model sheet here, which is made up of uh, various ratios, we can go down the page and maybe have a look at uh, Goodwill as a percentage of assets. And we can see that Apple got a very low amount of Goodwill. And then we go along and discover that uh, Adobe have a whopping great big 41%. And we might go to ourselves, well, that's a lot. But is it correct? Uh, you know, are we picking up the, the right value here? Well, if we use one of the functions that we have created, and I've attached a shortcut to that, we can have a look at this in more detail. We're actually going to go down and uh, drill down through the data to see what its components are. And yep, we can see the goodwill uh, value, and we can see, yep, yeah, that is goodwill. And if we use the other one of our functions, which enables us to look at all the components at the same level, and I'm going to press that now, we can see that um, goodwill is being divided by total assets, and we can cycle around these values if we want just to sort of check that uh, they are what we would expect them to be. So, so far so good, but that only sort of you know takes us to the standard sheet and um, this uh, standard values are picking up values from the as reported XBRL. And what we really want to see is whether this is actually the value that the company showed in their as reported XBRL financials. So if we drill down again, which we can do pressing the same drill down key, we can actually go and see where this value has come from in the as reported 10k, the HTML or paper version. Now we pick this up with the Goodwill tag. The company's called it Goodwill and it's on the face of the balance sheet so it's looking like Goodwill and we can see that the value is exactly the same as the value we've been using in our formulas. So it's clearly the case that Adobe just have an awful lot of Goodwill. So just as you can on the standard sheet, you can also cycle through all the different values that make up your particular formula from within the actual as reported filing itself. So if I click our other function, we will jump straight to total assets. And if I keep clicking it, just with the standard sheet, we can cycle through all the different values. So that gives you a flavor of what you can do with these new functions. And if we go to the standard sheet, you can see that we've made a change to this sheet which enables this to happen. We basically introduced some new columns, and these new columns have the cell references for these tags that we're picking up. And this is what enables us to basically dart back and forth from the model ratios to the actual values as they were reported by the company in their financial statements. And we could just use this reference to navigate there manually or we could copy it and use the go to function. Control G, paste it in, and that will take us directly to that particular cell. But it's still a little bit clunky really, and so I thought why don't I write a couple of simple macros to speed the process up a little bit. But the problem is that uh, when you write macros, or certainly when I write macros, I start to think, well that's good, but what about if it could do this, and what about that scenario? And before you know it, you've built something a, a heck of a lot more elaborate. And um, that's exactly what I've done. Now let's have a look at these functions in a little bit more detail so we can see exactly how they work. Let's go back to the model sheet and have a look at a data item that I've created specifically for this example. I thought it would be rather interesting to look at uh, return on capital employed and let's have a look at the values for all our companies. Very simple ratio I've created here. We can see that Microsoft has a very healthy 18% and some rather stellar returns of 23 and 25% from Apple and IBM and then good old Adobe has a rather pathetic 6% return on capital employed. Now we've had a look at Adobe, so let's maybe have a look at one of these um, stellar performers. How about Apple? And if we want to see why its return on capital employed is uh, so healthy, we could look at its components and we could use our drill down function to do just that. Now I have assigned um, the shortcut Control Y 
um, as my shortcut key because I thought, um, yeah, the Y looks a little bit like a drill down. So we're going to use that now. And if I press on it properly, we might even see what we're supposed to see. And um, we can see that its components are made up of, not surprisingly, uh, EBIT over capital employed. And all we're using here, in effect, is the trace precedence function that already exists in Excel. And um, yeah, it's very much our philosophy. Um, if there's something that already does what you want it to do, then there's no point trying to reinvent the wheel. You know, use what's already there. And it's exactly the reason why we bring our data down into Excel in the first place. So at this level, we just wrap this function in a macro. So why is return on capital employed so impressive for Apple? Is it because it's got a lot of earnings or is it not employing that much capital? Well, we can obviously look at these components using our drill down function. So let's have a look at earnings uh, first. Before we do that, let's have a quick look to see what it's made up of. And we can see there's one item take away a couple of others. So if we drill down, we'll see exactly what those items are, net profit being the first. Now we're going to use our other function, um, which I call drill across, because instead of going down, it looks at all the components on the same level. So we're kind of drilling across. And I've assigned it the keyboard shortcut control L, L for level. So let's use that to get to the next component. And not surprisingly, seeing it's EBIT, earnings before interest and tax, the next one is tax. And the next component is interest. And we can see from this that um, it's zero, which may mean that the company has no debt. And we can check this by, say, going back to the model sheet and having a look at capital employed and seeing if debt is a component of that. So again, we'll drill down using control Y and we can see that debt, uh, according to this, is zero. And we can have a look at the other component which is equity and so it looks like it's all made of equity and again if we want to have a look at this in more detail we can carry on drilling to actually look at the as reported financials the xbrl and see that yes it's made up entirely of uh, shareholders equity and that is the correct figure from shareholders equity it's taken from the balance sheet and scanning the rest of the balance sheet the liabilities we can see no sign of any debt so that all looks hunky dory so that's the functions that we have um, available. It's probably worth mentioning uh, before I finish that uh, these functions can be applied to um, any formula. Now, if you want to use these macros, you can download an example spreadsheet with them in. You can also download this example spreadsheet without the macros and download the source code for the macros separately if you're worried about security. Or you can just download the macros if you want and um, use them in another sheet. They're all available from www.xbrlxl.com. And yeah, it'd be great if you can use them. Uh, also, you can use them to in, improve on the code that's already there to create uh, even better macros. And uh, if you do that, let us know. Enjoy.